ever stepped on a scale expecting a huge drop in weight or muscle pack gains just to be disappointed? Well, honestly, you're not alone. Now imagine this, you've been hitting the gym religiously, swapping out your usual order of burgers and fries for some steamed veggies, some rice, broccoli, and chicken breast. You're feeling good, you're feeling strong, you're feeling motivated, and then you step on that scale and well, nothing happens. There's no massive drop, there's no massive increase, it's just the same old number staring back at you again. The scale can tell you if you've gained any muscle, if you're retaining any water weight, or overall any changes in your body composition. But here's the good news. There are other more comprehensive, easy, and consistent methods of tracking your progress. Method number one is gonna be body measurements. A tape measure is an effective and inexpensive way to help you see any changes in your body. While simple, this allows you to see changes that a scale simply can't. It's like the difference between hearing a story and watching it come alive in a movie. Now, how exactly do we do this right? Position the tape measure around the area where you intend to measure. Rather that be your hips, your biceps, wherever you want to measure. Make sure it's firmly around the area, but not too tight. You just wanna make sure that it's level and snug. Try to always measure in the same time of day under the same conditions. And if you measure while you're shirtless, well, do the same. Also, one thing that I recommend if you're measuring before a workout, we'll make sure that you're always measuring before a workout. That way your results are as consistent as possible. It's like baking a cake. If you're always changing the recipe halfway through, you're never gonna be able to get consistent results. Imagine you're about to buy brand new furniture for your house or your apartment, and you're measuring out the spaces. Well, you wouldn't just measure the first space and then just eyeball everything else, would you? know? You would measure everything to make sure that you have precise and consistent measurements to make sure that everything fits perfectly. And the same analogy applies to your body. Making sure that you're measuring in a consistent, proper method, make sure that you're getting consistent results. Remember, it's not about just the number on that scale. It's actually tracking the changes in your body. But don't get discouraged if you're not seeing immediate results on that scale. Getting your goals is like fine wine. It takes time to get that perfection in. But just like with that fine wine, if you have a little bit of patience and a measuring tape, you're on your way to an excellent way of measuring your results. Method number two are gonna be taking progress photos and videos. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, right? Well, in the world of fitness, a picture or a video can actually be worth a thousand scales. Let's talk about progress photos, the unsung hero of the fitness journey. You might have seen this yourself in your local gym, actually. When was the last time you went to the gym and you're in the bathroom and you see, a, and you see somebody in front of the mirror just snapping pictures of themselves flexing and everything, right? Well, immediately some people may say, oh, this person's conceited or whatever, but no, that's actually a fantastic way of measuring your progress. Our bodies are constantly changing for the better or for the worse. And those changes are something that again, a scale can't really show you. By taking progress photos and videos, it's sort of like keeping a video diary that allows you to step inside of a time machine. But in this case, instead of going back in time when dinosaurs existed, you're going back to a time where you could barely lift five pounds and you're noticing the progress that you've made throughout your fitness journey. Now again, the key of taking great progress photos are being consistent. Try to take pictures under the same lighting, the same conditions. Again, if you are taking pictures while clothing, try to use the same clothes, or preferably do it in privacy and do it uh, shirtless. What I like to do personally, I'll take a picture of myself every morning as soon as I wake up before drinking any water or anything at all, and then I'll take another picture and video post-workout. That way I have two different ways to measure my progress. So think about it like your own little personal photo shoot, except none of the fancy equipments. You could either do this at home, or you could do like, like me and just take your tripod with you. You could probably leave it in your locker if you don't wanna be bothering people with your tripod, and then once you're done with your workout, just go out, take a few pictures and videos, and save that into your video diary. If you're looking at your past pictures and comparing them to your present pictures, look for any changes in muscle tone, any reduction in fat, or any overall changes in your body composition. Remember, sometimes the progress that you've made can't accurately be told by a scale, but seeing a picture or a video can tell a whole different new story. Method number three is gonna be evaluating or monitoring 
your metric performance. Remember back in the day when you first started to work out and you could barely lift those five pound dumbbells? Well, I do. Fact, fun story, the first time that I ever stepped inside of a gym, I had the smart idea to try squats before anything else. And guess what? I fell down with nothing but the bar. Fun times. But fast forward and my personal PR is 405 for two reps. And I've seen plenty of cases like this. Now, what does that mean? Well, obviously you're making phenomenal progress. How exactly do we measure this progress? In the world of fitness, your metric performances are like secret agents. Always in the background, lurking in the shadows, gathering data on your strength, your endurance, your speed, and all other performance metrics. The only difference is that unlike a spy, they're not here to spy on you. They're here to help you. Your performance metrics are here to provide you insights on your strength, your endurance, your speed, to let you know how you're progressing throughout your journey. Imagine you're a baker, and the only tool that you have at your disposal is a spoon. Sure, you could use that spoon to mix the batter and everything, but what are you gonna do when it comes time to cut ingredients, measure, and do other tasks? You're gonna need other tools, right? Well, these are your performance metrics. In the world of fitness, your performance metrics are all the tools that you have in your disposable to monitor how you're progressing on every single aspect. In the realm of fitness, the scale is just one tool. You have a wide arsenal of tools, so why not use them all? Don't just rely on a scale when you're trying to paint the masterpiece that is your fitness journey. So go ahead and celebrate every time you do smash a PR. Method number four is gonna be using the mirror and your clothing. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fittest of them all? All jokes set aside, using the mirror is similar to taking a, a visual diary. By using the mirror and seeing how your clothing is adjusting or fitting by time, you're able to see how your body is changing. The advantages of using a mirror is that you could actually do this shirtless and see your body from a wide range of angles, noticing any changes in either muscle tissue, fat loss, or any composition whatsoever. You can either do this like I do in the gym or in the privacy of your own home. And the same thing applies to your clothing, guys. So, Let's say you started out and you bought a brand new pair of jeans, for an example, and you were never really able to fit inside of those jeans, right? And five, six months later, you're now not only able to fit inside those jeans, they're actually kind of big on you. If these aren't clear indicators that you're making progress, let me know down in the comments what are. So keep on working hard every day, making the right choices, because even though you might not notice the changes now, Trust me, your mirror and your clothing will. And method number five is simply gonna be getting a fat percentage test. While there are pretty fancy and elaborate machinery that is available to get you the utmost precise amounts of fat per uh, percentages that you have in your body, there are also a lot of easy, practical ways that the everyday gym goer can do to see and, prog and monitor their progress on their fat loss. For example, a really effective and inexpensive way is simply buying a pair of clips. You could buy a pair of clips in Walmart for about 10 bucks and download the instructions from the internet and all you have to do is pinch yourself in certain body parts to see how much body fat you have in that certain spot. Another method is there's actually a machine that's available to see a rough estimate of your body fat. You just enter some details as in your height, your age, your current weight, and how many, uh, your training frequency, and then you actually grab this machine and it gives you a rough estimate in about 15 seconds, you guys. The beauty about this is that in most commercial gyms, they're available and you can use this for free. Now, are these the most precise methods out there? No, but do they get the job done at an affordable price and relatively easy way? Yes. One thing that you could do to make this a little bit more precise to see if you're actually progressing alongside your journey is don't just weigh or, or take your percentages once. Do it every single day in the week and at the end of the week, divide your results by seven. This is gonna give you an average amount of where you're currently at taking into consideration any fluctuations, right? Or any discrepancies in the machine. Once you have that average number, just compare that to other averages from the past week by week. And even there, even though there is a small 
margin of error. If you started out at let's say 25% body fat and three months in, now you're at 18 or 17% body fat, well, obviously you're making progress. So while a skill can tell you how much you weigh at a current time, it's never gonna be able to tell you the entire story of your fitness journey. That's why it's essential to use every single one of these methods to track your progress. And hey, you guys, if you enjoyed this video, you should watch this video next for even more tips on your fitness journey.